Welcome to White Threads Floss Tube number 85. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you haven't yet subscribed, I would absolutely love it if you did. Um, I would love it if you'd comment on the, the things you see in this video, ask questions if you need to, um, like it, whatever, you know, all those things to make me feel encouraged and to make me feel like I want to keep doing them. Of course, I do want to keep doing them, but it's really nice to get encouragement from you. Thanks. So today, I understand that the US and Canada are starting to receive their copies of Friesian White Work. Woohoo! So I know there are probably a lot of people who are very excited having received theirs in the last few days or maybe knowing that they're going to be arriving in the next few days. Um, I hope to hear from you what you think of the book. It'd be really lovely to get some reviews. You can post them on my Facebook page. You can email them directly to me. You can put them on your Facebook page and tag me or on Instagram and tag me, you know, wherever. Just let me know if you're re reviewing it because I'd, I'd love to read what you have to say and what you think about it so thank you um so the one one thing i wanted to remind you of if you are in the us or canada or you know anywhere else that's received your copy because i know it's already come to europe um you can order supplies packs of the various product and pro, uh, projects from the book i've got supplies packs for all of them um you can order them and i have heard that uh, deliveries to the US particularly at the moment are being very quick I have no idea why but let's just enjoy that while we can so I received an email the other day from someone who said that there's arrived in less than a week which I think that's pretty amazing during a pandemic where there are very few flights in and out of Australia so you know that's great news so if you're considering buying but you're thinking oh it might take a while well it still might take a while but you might be one of the very lucky ones who yours is very very quick um, so yeah give it a go now i had a friend just come over and pick up a couple of needle minders from me and the first thing that she said to me was oh it's bigger than i expected now that was a good thing she was happy about that but i just wanted to show it to you again and talk to you about the size of it it's 25 millimeters across or one inch so it, hopefully that might give you some idea of size if you see it next to my face got the scale happening um so yeah that might give you an idea of, a, of an accurate idea of what the size is so yeah they might be bigger than what you expected um what else do i have to tell you today um written a list oh yes upcoming classes um the rest of the world probably has absolutely no idea that sydney is under a lockdown at the moment and it's looking like unfortunately the victoria um might be going back into lockdown too because of some yeah, things that have happened so we're being hit by the delta variant here in australia at the moment we have very low rates of immunization vaccination because the government has done a very poor job of rolling out the vaccination program so a lot of people are unvaccinated or not fully vaccinated which means that it's a bit scary with this new variant going throughout the community and spreading extremely quickly so sydney is under lockdown i'm not in sydney i'm in regional new south wales and we are not under lockdown we do have some extra um restrictions on us but uh, we're not under lockdown thankfully so I've got some classes coming up in the next little while my smoig class which is in just a couple of weeks time um, thankfully all the participants that have registered for that are regional um, which means that they're not under lockdown orders uh, so that class should go ahead unless they extend the lockdown to regional New South Wales or the whole of New South Wales. So we're looking good for that at the moment um, and hopefully we will stay that way too. Uh, if you are enrolled in that class, I will be keeping in contact with you about this. So if anything changes, I will let you know. Um, with any of my classes, if I have to cancel the class for whatever reason and COVID would be the main one, um, you will get a full refund of your class fees. Uh, that doesn't mean you, st I mean, you still want to do the class, I'm assuming. So yeah, we'll, we will have to look at perhaps rescheduling if that is possible, or maybe taking it online. So at the end of July, beginning of August, no, at the end of August, sorry, um, my Frisian white work class will be running, which is fully booked. Now there are people coming from all over Australia for that. They're coming from Sydney and the greater Sydney region, which is under lockdown. And there are some local people as well. Who knows? 
what things are going to be like at the end of August. At the moment, the people from interstate probably can't come because our borders to New South Wales are shut. People from Sydney are not allowed to leave Sydney. So I don't know what's going to be happening with that. It's still about six weeks away. Things might change by then. They might be far worse by then. That'd be great, wouldn't it? Um, so I will just continue to monitor the situation. This morning when I realised that regional New South Wales might have to go into lockdown soon and things just might just get terribly much worse, I thought, right, well, I'm going to see what I can do to get that class online. Um, so if you're enrolled in that class or the one that's coming up in November, the November one might run, who knows what's going to be happening in November, no idea at all. Um, I'm going to be working to get it online, so if that's the only option that we have, then that is at least an option. Um, yeah, so I've pulled out my camera that I bought for doing online demonstrations with months ago, but I just haven't had the chance to use it yet. So I'm going to have a fiddle around with that today and see if I can start getting some videos done, some instructional videos of the stitches so that if we have to, we run that class online. If that doesn't suit you, then certainly we will look at other options. I might be able to move you to a class later on that does run in person. Who knows when that's going to be? So we're just all having to be really flexible at the moment and the word of the, the while is pivot, so we're seeing if we can pivot on this one as well. So just if you're worried about your enrolment in that class, just contact me and we will see what we can work out. At this stage, it should be able to go ahead. Well, no, it probably won't go ahead. Who knows? No idea. No idea at all. <laughs> but know that I, I, I do want to deliver these classes and I will do whatever I can to do so because I want you to come. I want to meet you. I want to have fun with you. I want to do embroidery with you. Yeah. What else have I got? Hmm, I think that's all of the catching up that I wanted to get said. Oh no, if you're stitching things from Frizzy and White Work, then I would love to see your progress on them. A lot of people like to post their pro progress on Facebook and Instagram. Um, you can email me your photos of how you're going with it or your finished products. I love to see finished projects. I love it, I love it, I love it. Um, you, if you're posting on Instagram, please tag me. I'm Vetty Creations on Instagram. Um, you can also tag it with Frizzy and White Work or Frizz Wit Work, which would be the Dutch equivalent of the same thing. Uh, so you can use any or all of those tags. Um, if you're uh, putting it on Facebook, then I'd love it if you'd put a photo up in my uh, White Work Embroidery Facebook group. And if you're not a, not a member of that, then you're very welcome to join it. Just keep in mind that when you fill out the questions to join, you need to say what your understanding of white work is, and you also need to agree to the rules. The agreeing to the rules is the part that most people either forget or don't see that they need to do, um, but you will need to do that or else I won't let you into the group. Not that I'm being mean, just that I have certain standards for who comes into my group so that we can keep the rubbish out. Um, so yes, just remember to do both of those things. Uh, so yes, you can post photos in there and we can all enjoy them together and, and cheer you on with how you're going with your projects. So I'd love to see some photos. Please share them with me. Thank you. Right, now, yesterday or the day before, no, it was probably earlier this week. This week's gone a bit quicker than I expected it to. I was searching through a box of embroideries that were given to me by some relatives of my husband. So there's some family embroideries from a little way back in his family. And I came across this little one in amongst them. So it's just a little doily done on beautiful fine linen uh, with some eyelets and some satin stitching and probably looking from the back, I couldn't tell, but yes, it's, it's stem stitch. And then it's got a little crocheted border around the edge. But the thing that caught my eye and this may not come up very well. Oh no, it's it's looking okay. Um, were the bits of seed stitch in this section here. And it reminded me that one of the things that I've wanted to tell you about is what I do to make randomly spaced stitching. Now my randomly spaced stitching is anything but random, but there is a technique that I use to make it look random. So I'm going to do a demo of how I do it, explain to you my spacing that I use, and um, 
that's what I'm going to show you today. Okay. So here we have the end of the doily that was given to me by some of my husband's relatives. And you can see this flower here has some beautiful little eyelets. It's edged in, uh, well, I think it's actually outline stitch rather than stem stitch. And it's got little uh, seeding stitch in it. Seeding stitch is usually made up of either very short single back stitches or double back stitches, so worked one on top of the other. And these ones here look to be double to me. They're very short and they just go one on top of the other and they create beautiful little pattern and texture within a shape. So they're really, it's a really lovely stitch to use to fill a shape with. So when you're doing stitching like this, which is scattered randomly, and I say randomly with um, inverted commas around it, you do, I, I do mine anything but random. If we look at this here, and now I'm just pointing with this, I'm not actually going to draw on it, thank goodness. Um, we can see that there's a dot there, a dot there, a dot there, a dot there, there, there. And you can see that that forms a triangle, 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 that forms a triangle. So actually what they tend to do, what I do and what I notice that they've done here is work with little equilateral or nearly equilateral triangles. So let me do a demonstration of that for you here. So if I put a dot there and I one there and one there, so that would be my equilateral triangle. Then I might put another one over here, one over here, one over here, one over here. So as I was making this video, the sound suddenly and inexplicably cut out and I haven't been able to get it to work again. I'm using my new camera for this uh, and it's quite a learning process. So this time I'm just going to do a soundtrack over the top of the video so that we can have some sound with it because seeing I haven't figured out how to actually get the sound to work. So what I'm going to do is show you how I would space my dots um, if I was doing my stitches. So you start off and you're basically creating the points of equilateral triangles. So you can see that that's an equilateral triangle there and there. And then we add more in. We don't want them to be completely equilateral though because the more regular it is, the more, less random it looks. So we actually want the spacing to be just a little bit off in terms of our equilateral triangles. What I've got here is probably a little bit too regular, but you can see the way I'm doing it. So... I'm going to now start joining some of those line uh, dots together to show you the triangles that they would create if they were joined together. We wouldn't of course do this with our stitching, we'd just use the points of the triangles to space the stitching apart. So you can see how that works. What I found really interesting about this though was that the old piece that's probably more than 50 years old uses this same technique whether by design or by accident all of their stitches are spaced as triangles and I just found that really interesting. So I hope that was helpful explained to you that random looking stitching is often not random at all and you will have seen that on the example that I showed you the piece from my husband's family it's not random at all either. They've done pretty much exactly the same thing. Um, so I hope that was helpful to you and that it helps you with your stitching. So thanks so much for joining me today and I will see you next time. Bye.